Hi everybody, Deborah from Very Best Little Hair House here, and I think tonight will be the first episode of my wig shop video diary. A lot of people ask me about opening up a store, um, and I thought I'd share it because if I can open up a store, anybody can open up a store. I knew nothing about business. Um, so these are just going to be about some things I learned along the way. There's five reasons I opened the store. One is Buffy. She is my pug. Lately, about a year ago, she's become diabetic and blind. So when that first happened, I would say about two years ago, that's when I start, started to toy with the idea of if I had my own business, I could bring her with me. So... Uh, the other one is Barnabas, and he's walking around here somewhere, and I'll try and drag him in so you can meet him too. And my husband, of course, who you've seen in videos clowning around. Uh, my love for wigs, which is probably the real biggest reason, and that's a whole episode in itself. And my hate for high prices and rip-offs and just bad treatment of people. So, in the wig groups, I had been reading about uh, people's experiences with the big dot-coms and the returns and stuff like that. And I want to say, you know, I say it all the time, but I don't think people actually, like, listen to it. Like, spend your money where somebody appreciates it. You know, you work too hard for that money. And to give it to somebody that it don't matter to, you can do better than that. And also... These 30% off sites all the time, um, you're not going to get reliable merchandise from them, and I'll explain why in another episode. But a small business owner like me or somebody that's selling one of their wigs that's new on the site or whatever is really going to appreciate that money. Um, but even though I explain all of this, people still seem to want to run to uh, whatever site is the cheapest. But please think about this. And uh, the vendors. The people that manufacture the wigs, to me, if I was a consumer, I'd want to know which ones treat, you know, from the top on down the best. Uh, some of them are very good, but one in particular really doesn't seem to care for the small business woman like me. Um, quickly going through my experiences with this company... I'll try and sum it up and not get too off topic. But when you first start and you're new in business, they're skeptical of you. And until you make a couple purchases or what have you, then, you know, they t tend to take it a little more seriously. Um, although you don't get the big deals, the good discounts and stuff is unless you buy a whole lot in one time. Um, and that's another episode. Anyway, this week alone... This particular vendor that I depend on because I've got customers that wear their product faithfully. I ordered some options for a customer. It was supposed to be in at the end of the week. Towards the end of the week, I checked and it was still preparing for shipment. So I called to find out why. They couldn't figure out why, but it was still preparing for shipment. So at that point, he, the vendor is like, well... I'll rush it out to you, expedite it, you know, at no extra charge to you. And at that point, I'm like, never mind. I'm going out of town for a week, so it's not going to get to me any sooner. So he's still in a little effort to make me feel better. Did it two-day shipping instead of regular or what have you, um, and I was gone. So when I get home from my vacation Sunday night, I'm all excited because I get all, yay, when I have a wig thing just like it's for myself I open up the package to find out they sent two correct wigs but in the wrong color and it was a color I never would have intentionally or ordered because it was pretty much a bright orange um, and I already have a surplus of wigs that are in any shade of red in my store and nobody's buying them I even did 50% off and nobody was interested in the red shades Anyway, so I call them. I'm, you know, angry because now it's two weeks late. By the time they ship the correct thing out, it's going to be three weeks late. I don't like looking that way to a customer. When I give you my word, I want you to be able to depend on it. So that is also fueling my 
anger towards this situation. Um, and so somebody called me and said, well, we'll send you a return authorization and you have to follow all of these instructions or we won't take it back at all. And that occurred to me that it's very much like when you're a consumer and you buy from a site that even if it's their error, what the heck is that? So they sent me the label and they said, well, we'll send you the two correct color wigs out today overnight at no charge. So I was like really impressed because I was like, wow, they're really going to attempt to fix this error, which is like the fourth error in a row. Uh, from them and so I was happy about that but as I'm watching my bank account later in the day they charged me for the two new wigs that they were sending out when it was their error and when I read the instructions on the return it also said I was going to be billed eight dollars per wig for the restocking fee now this is their error so I want you to know that you know as a consumer us small guys are going through the same thing and that's just not cool. You know, if you sell a product, get it to the person on time and back it up. But that's probably another episode. So, I did get them to agree not to take the $8 fee. And in order to do that, I had to point out their history of errors with me. And here's the, correct, the, the, the icing on the cake. Um, the day before Christmas, I had a promise to pay them agreement where they were supposed to take a small amount out on Christmas Eve. And come to find out, they took out $800 because I had six bounce transactions on my account during these holiday hours where nobody is answering their phones or what have you. And luckily, I got to my bank manager first because he knows why I opened the store, that it's important for me. I want to revitalize our downtown area, um, get small business going, you know, just the whole thing to further the economy, plus help women get nice wigs and affordable prices. And that's, you know, I think I've talked about that before, the nightmare of ordering online and how it doesn't always work for you. And I've further learned that from working in my store. Almost everybody that comes in and they think, they like, for example, they say, oh, do you have Sweet Talk by Gabor? And I show them what I have and they end up going with something totally different. So that could be one reason why what you order online ends up not working for you in those cases. But anyway, so they debited my account for $700. Uh, I was able to come back from that and cover my bounced checks because the bank manager helped me. And when I told them what the rep what happened she had no idea because i guess that company's so big that this department doesn't talk to that department and finally when i went to someone in accounting uh, it was the second error that they made where i actually got to talk to accounting um it was a couple months later after i swore i'm not going to do any payment agreements with this company because i can't trust them i mean that was all the money i had that left me like negative before Christmas. So hesitant to do this agreement. They talk me into another one. I'm thinking to my customers, yeah, I can at least have a couple synthetics of this company in the store so that I can show people. And I like to know my merchandise. So I'm like, okay, you got me. Let's do this deal. Thing happens again, where they deduct the entire amount instead of just taking the second payment. So I'm like livid at this point, and I'm like, I'm certainly not going to deal with them anymore, except I had a customer that needed another uh, easy part, Ooh. Uh, needed another topper, um, and this is ordered from this particular company, so I had to order from them again. And that's how this whole delay on me. And I also had ordered her the wigs that I thought she might be interested in. So that's how they got this last thing. So that even though it wasn't part of the payment agreement, they still screwed the order up. And they left me to, like, clean the bill up. And, you know, that's just not cool. I don't treat any customer that way. And I just think it's sad. This wig business is so cutthroat. 
I had no idea. I don't get it. I mean, there's enough customers and enough things for everybody. Why do it have to be so treacherous? And apparently everybody in this business listens to the big business because I know for a fact that they get better deals than I do. Just being a small fish in a large pond, I don't even get like a free comb from this particular company. So anyway, I hope I didn't bore you with this and just wanted to share that you have problems on the other side of the wig store too. And I hope uh, the next episode will entertain you as well. Thanks. Bye-bye.